it goes back early part of the 20th century where oil was discovered in either Texas or Alaska, somewhere like that. I can't remember where it was. But basically, the land was there if you were prepared to work it. And people came from all over America to stake a claim. And one of these people who did that was a family from New York. The father struggled, he sold life insurance for a living, he had a large family, and they all sold up and they bought uh, drilling equipment and they plotted up and they actually started drilling. And they'd spent everything, there was no way they could return, so they drilled. Weeks went by and they drilled. Months went by and they drilled, no oil. The funds were running very, very low, and they were all out of pocket and they came to this crisis point and they all decided we're going to go back to New York, we'll sell the drilling rig for scrap and just put it down to experience. So they did. And the scrap dealer who bought the rig came along and he said, I wonder if this still works. And he thought, well, I'll start it up. So he started it up, thinking that rather than selling it for scrap, if it was working, he'd probably get a bit more for it. And he drilled and drilled, and within an hour, oil. He struck oil. That is a true story. And the people who actually started the drilling, first of all, learned a very, very important lesson from that. They decided, if you have hope, hang on to it. Don't ever despair, hang on to it. Because you don't know how far you are from success. Now that cost that family a very, very expensive lesson, but they learnt, and they learnt the hard way. And I'm telling you this because there's a lot of people in this room, in this country, nationalists, who are learning, but learning the hard way. And it isn't right. I started to take interest in this party as far back as 1979, when Margaret Thatcher took the rug clean from under the feet of the National Front. She told everybody, don't worry, you don't want to vote for extremists. I know how you feel, you don't want to be swamped by foreigners. Vote for me. My first mistake was I believed that, and I voted Tory. I drank champagne then when she was elected. <laughs> I haven't been able to afford it since. <laughs> but, and then I heard people very close to me expressing their concern about rights for whites, how we were losing our rights, how in school we were having the Muslims coming in and we had to accept their halal meat and uh, allow them to pray and all the rest of it. And you know, if you said anything, you were racist. And then eventually I saw on the news, Derek Beacon won. And do you know what? Unlike those people, who actually decided to sell up, I thought to myself, just the opposite now, there is hope. I watched him on the TV, I watched other people, I watched the establishment panic and shudder and, oh, it was lovely to see it. It really was lovely to see it. And there was a nationalist that I could relate to for the first time. And that gave me such tremendous courage that to hell with what people said, I, even, I eventually found the phone number of the bookshop over in uh, South London. I haven't looked back since. And I watched that party grow from Derek Beacon, as Richard said, to a lovely piece of machinery that was getting bigger and bigger and all more embracing. It was becoming hands-on. Ordinary people were looking to the BNP because they were going places, they were winning, and the establishment were panicking, and the Reds were throwing everything at us, and the establishment, you know, every day in the paper you had a derogatory article. That's how you know you're doing well. I'll tell you what we need to do. We, there is no better time now for a nationalist party to come forward, because the problems we're having have never been to this magnitude before. And if we had one force that would represent nationalists and people who cared about this country, we would clean up. And you know, a bit like 
the, 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 the family that sold the oil rig. I don't want to do that. I don't want to sell my rig. I don't want to sell it for scrap because something deep inside me is telling me that someone, come the hour, come the man, something will happen. But I really don't want to see nationalists slagging nationalists and in competition. <laughs> I never want to see nationalists fighting nationalists. I never want to stand with a party that, that will act, actually compete with another because we're all going the one way. Please, please, somebody give me hope like Derek Beacon gave me all those years ago. Face to our nation, to our children <coughs> and future grandchildren at the time. I cannot understand how the BMP were destroyed and how the people that destroyed it have got the audacity to call themselves nationalists. I cannot understand it. So that's why now, at my, my later years, I might say, I'm the London organiser. I will do my utmost to bring London forward. Um, it's, a, it, it's a very big responsibility, and, and I'm, I'm going to do my best. Um, it's hard because uh, I'm not frightened. Nothing frightens me in that way. I'm frightened of hospitals, but I'm not frightened of being a nationalist, if you know what I mean. The two are totally separate. Um, uh, and I think to be in a position as I am in, you are to a degree putting your head in a lion's mouth. I don't care about that. What I really do care about is bringing people together. The people that are brave, most of us, as somebody, uh, the previous speaker said, you've got to be brave to make the effort to come here tonight. Mm -hmm. So we are brave. We must tell the world that we are going to be here to the end of time till we win this battle. We will win. I do agree with Richard. And sometimes I get up and think, oh, my God, go to Lewisham, go to Catford, go to Peckham. Now, we haven't got a chance. We have got a chance. All the time there are brave people, like us, the small amount of people in this room. These meetings are going on all over the country, in different parts of the world, I know, and there are lots of people are fighting for the same thing, for their race and for their nation. We cannot let it slip through our fingers at this time. So, my... my uh, when I first became a nationalist, was I was having a hard time where I lived. Um, my, my family's lives were made miserable. We, we moved on, we moved away. Instead of staying at that time where we were and fighting the people that were trying to drive my family out, uh, we should have stayed there. And I'll always regret that because I've never ever been se settled in a home really since then and that was... 30 years ago. So, um, you know, there are weak points and we do run away sometimes, but we've come to the stage now where there is nowhere to run. Very true. And I must agree with the gentleman that spoke before me. Facebook is a danger. We've seen it. We've well, I've not read it. I won't. I won't have part in it. I'm telling you that people that are involved with this sort of trash and scandal are not nationalists. There's a very nice little story I read about East Germany many, many years ago. Um, a dissident had a visit from the secret police of Stasi, and they said to him, "Look, you're an intelligent man. Why do you keep going on criticising and fighting the state in East Germany?" We're all powerful. You can't beat us. You can't do anything about it. All you're doing is making trouble for yourself. We're giving you some good advice here. Just give it up. Give it up. You can't win. Well, not long afterwards, the uh, Stasi state collapsed. Mm. Now, the, 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 same, the same lesson uh, really should be drawn about the, the, the Millwall victory in 1993. There, were, uh, there was no more unfashionable political party in Britain in 1993 than the BNP. The press was universally uh, against us. The whole establishment, the whole nearly the whole country was against us. 
and yet so we still managed to win an election. Now, how is that? Uh, there's, there's a lesson there for any, any uh, strand of politics, whether you're left or right, that if the public perceives the way the society is run to be unfair, it doesn't matter how strong the state is, you can do something about it if you're tenacious, at least uh, with a, a considerable amount of effort. Uh, it, the, the victory it was thought impossible in 1993 for a party like the BNP to win an election. Uh, my prevailing memory of the count is, is of a, a hall completely packed with press and the looks on their faces. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. There, there was a feeding frenzy. They wanted to be given a, uh, a press release and saying something they could use to get some coverage or something. So it doesn't matter how, if, if things are unfair, you can do something. You can get the public's ear, even if the public are not told to listen. And there's nothing more unfair than the policy of mass immigration to this country, which never had any democratic support. People talk about the empire, you went there, so they come here. Well, when I was growing up, I was taught that if you think the empire was bad, then two, two wrongs don't make a right. There's never been anything so unfair as what's being done to this, this, this country. And, and that's why, in, in the same way as East Germany was grossly unfair, uh, people eventually re reacted against it. Now, at, at the count, um, Derek, Derek Beacon um, made a little statement to the press. And he said, uh, we're going to take our country back. That, that little statement on television, that little clip of film, was used thousands of times on television. It went on for about five years afterwards. They were still showing that clip of film. It's absolutely incredible. Talk about echoing into eternity, like they say in that, the film about the, 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 the gladiators. It really did echo in, into eternity. In fact, just last week, which, which well-known political leader this week used that phrase in his speech? Nigel Farage. He said, we're going to take our country back. So when, uh, when, when Richard spoke earlier of how, um, how, the, how that changed British politics, it's... Uh, it's absolutely true, and, and against impossible circumstances. Do you know, during, during the few days after Derek won, the press went round the Isle of Dogs, and they tried to find somebody uh, who would admit they'd, uh, they'd voted BNP. They couldn't find a single person who, who would admit voting BNP. And what kind of democracy is it where a voter can't admit to putting a councillor in, into his local town hall? They couldn't afford to admit it. It was too risky. Well... This is not fair. The, the situation now in this country, of course, is even more grossly unfair than it was then. And we, we really have to keep, keep at this. And then, of course, anyone who thinks that nothing's changed since then, it's changed enormously. Uh, the people are not as passive as they were in, in 1993. In, 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 at that time, the press would not cover immigration. They had a rule. It was, it was a taboo subject. Now it's in the press every day. So we, we don't know. I, I, I don't, uh, can't say whether we'll win or we'll lose. But what I can say is that things have uh, radically uh, travelled in a positive direction for us in the succeeding 20 years. What happens now is up to us. 1993, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, two events happened that year. One was the murder of Stephen Lawrence. Yeah. Remember that? Racist murders, racist things. Let, let me tell you about racism and racist murders, okay? Within a five mile radius of Elton, right? Five mile radius of Elton, in the last 20 years, there have been 25 racist murders. Mm -hmm. 25 racist murders. Mm -hmm. Heard about them? No. Probably no. not. You heard of Brian Humberstone? Ever heard of him? You wouldn't because they're well here. <laughs> Ever heard of uh, Terry Gregory, 19 yeah. years old? Yeah, on Saturday on the bus. Yeah, 2003. What about Billy Gregory, 23 years old, 2005? Have heard of them? Her brothers. Mrs. Gregory lost both her sons within two years. White boys killed by blacks or Asians. Have heard of Mrs. Gregory? Have heard of her? Has she got peerage? Is she in the House of Lords? No. What about Danny O'Shea, 2016? Have heard of him? Canning Town. What about Nellie Cutrus, a 92 years old, 92 years old pensioner, right, who's going to a pensioner's afternoon tea party, right, on a ferry estate in Kidbrook, attacked and murdered. Never heard of her? Of course not. Never heard of any of these people. 25 racist murders in the last 20 years within a five mile radius of Elton. Elton, that's Stephen Lawrence was killed. Never heard of them. Because all the perpetrators were black and Asian, 
and all the victims were white. Mm -hmm. And that's just in one small part of London. Not in the whole of London, another citizen of this country, the rest of the country. How many more murders have there been, racist murders? Mm -hmm. Never mind the rapes and the muggings and the other mm -hmm. racial violent acts against whites. Now another key incident in that year, 93, was the election of Derek Deacon. We won that, that year, we won, and he gave us hope, he broke the mould. It inspired us then, and it inspires us now. Never forget why we are here. We're here because we're racial nationalists. We care about our people. We care about our race, okay? 25 anti-racist murders in that small part of London, okay? 25. Now, don't be conservative the way. We won before, we can win again. Let's do it. Well done. Thank you.